So with no further ado, um, I would like to introduce Agustin Blasquez, and he is from Cuba. He'll tell you his, his whole thing. Um, just want to point out that, are you aware that um, in, that like the Cuban government, uh, the Castro's regime, um, they have certain artists that are there for propaganda, and they, they make sure those artists in the world of music or art and so forth get, uh, get glowing reviews to create a specific impression on Americans. Okay? And then the Cuban-American artists are here, are, are made to um, be quiet, and they are forced to be silent because they are politically incorrect. So there's all sorts of ways that government influence our, our free, free speech and freedom of press. Um, Augustine is, if you were here early for popcorn and the video clips, he has produced more than 200 productions, um, videos, documentaries, music things. He does other topics also. So that is amazing. And he has also written more than 300 articles. So it's hard for these people to cram in in a short amount of time what they have to say. Augustine, please, enlighten us. Thank you very much. Barack Obama ran two campaigns on the promise to fundamentally transform the US. But he did not say from or to. My name is Agustin Velasquez. I was born in Cuba. There I lived through the fundamental transformation from capitalism to socialism, which I want to make clear it was really a change to a communist totalitarian uh, government, system of government. That is the truth. Even if rebranded as progressive, democratic, socialism, Marxist, I want to tell you that actually Marxism is the scientific method to build socialist and communist societies, period. No matter how they try to sugarcoat it, that's what it is. People with no experience living inside those societies often fall into Marxist-inspired fundamental transformation without knowing what it entails. After Castro took over Cuba in 1959, even those designs were very clear to the European and Chinese immigrant on the island who had first-hand experience with communism and alerted us the general Cuban population thought it can happen here, not in our country. But after I left Cuba, I found out from exiles from the Soviet Union and uh, East European satellite countries and people from China, uh, Vietnam, and North Korea that the techniques of repression and population control <coughs> communists use in their countries were exactly the same as in Cuba. In order for socialism or communism to be installed, a proven method is used to gradually take control step by step of your everyday life. First, promises are made to solve long-standing problems. The solutions sound good. They appear to you emotionally, but if you think them through, you realize they could never work, but they hook many people. Later, scare tactics are introduced to eventually control those who resist the dictates of the mighty government that they control over every aspect of life. The promise equality everybody gets according to their needs sound good, but what you find is something else. Lying is one of the tools they use the most. The real result is a two-class system of a powerful elite and everyone else supporting the elite. The equality they promise may sound good to you, but the price you pay for the inequality you end up with is enormous. 
And the system has a big problem. As a result of so much abuse, low income, demands on the workers and low salaries for their work, the workers lose incentive and production decreases to very low level. Therefore, the economy eventually collapses and the working class ends up in line hoping to get food, while the elite get everything they want. The system of rationing seems like a good idea until you discover that just because you have permission to buy food doesn't mean that there will be any for you to buy. Meanwhile, the elite take over the best houses and apartment buildings for themselves, resulting in a lack of housing for the workers. The working class is forced by so-called necessary regulation or executive orders to share the houses they are assigned to with other people. So they lose their privacy and security. That is in addition to the meager quantity and quality of food, the rationing of electricity, water, as well as electrical appliance, clothing, and all of the most elementary first necessity items like toilet paper. It's all part of the repressive techniques the communists use to keep the people constantly preoccupied with how to survive from one day to the next. That keep people busy and with no energy to protest or revolt against the government. You are even forbidden to associate with others or form any kind of group that could plan resistance to the government. That is why it is extremely difficult to remove Marxist-inspired government from power. A big power from military and secret police apparatus is always installed to protect everyone from the country's powerful enemies, so they say. Another lie. The power from military and police are used to protect the elite from the workers. It's hard to believe what I am telling you, but there are many examples in history. Look at the recent case of Venezuela. A country very rich with oil and strong economy, but after a socialist system was imposed by Hugo Chavez, directed from Cuba, the economy has collapsed, leaving the worker in food lines for hours. But the income of the oil continues. Where is it going? Now the workers are hungry and lack the necessary supplies of daily life like even toilet paper. The Venezuelans have tried to revolt many times, but have always lost due to the brutal, crushing repression of the government and its dreaded police and military. Many blame Cuba's bad economy on the U.S. embargo. But there was never any embargo against Venezuela and the country is in ruins, at least from the point of view of everyone but the elite class. The cause is the system in place there. Communism. So, what's it like living inside those societies where there are no human rights? You are at the mercy of a mighty government that dictates where you live where you work, and the meager salary you receive for the rest of your life. And whether or not you go to jail. The progressive socialist Marxists, whatever they call themselves, do not tell you about any of the horrors. They paint a rosy picture with free education and free college and free health care for everybody in order to get you to vote for them. That's the first step. In Cuba, and in all those Marxist-inspired failures, they keep file on each individual, from birth 
to death. Based on the information in the file, official decides where you live, what you are allowed to study, what kind of job is assigned to you, and what you eat. Well, sure, this is unbelievable to you Americans, but it's true. You quickly realize you can't trust anybody because you don't know who is an informer, not even members of your own family. When I left Cuba, just my mother, my father, and my aunt knew. I was afraid to tell anyone else. I couldn't explain or even say goodbye. If you talk to other people in other communist countries, it's always the same. People live in fear 24-7. So far, no one has been able to apply Marxism without ending in economic failure for the workers and a totalitarian repressive system where people are deprived of individual freedoms. That creates a very strange state of mind and you grow up with new principles and ways of thinking that are completely different from people who live in free democratic societies where individuality and privacy are respected. I remember that the Marxists in America in the 1980s and 90s used to say that people from the Soviet Union were just like us. That is far from reality. They were not like us because they grew up in a completely different environment without access to freedom or the free flow of information. The Cubans of today, educated on the communists, are completely different from me, my parents, and others of the pre-Castro Cuba. They simply do not have the same principles because they learn to lie and steal in order to survive. So they have no work ethic. I do not want those of you and coming to the US now because they are causing problems, milking US social services and committing crimes. Some because that's what they are used to do in Cuba in order to survive. And of course, having them come here helps with the fundamental transformation, as Barack Obama calls it, of the US. In the United States, believers in Marxism have managed to penetrate the academic world. This is another part of the Marxist process to install Communism here. Today, Marxists are in place from the elementary to the university level, teaching their old, obsolete ideology. So it is not a new and improved ideology. It is imposing an old theory that invariably ends up in a slavery. Yes, slavery. I find it extremely contradictory that in the US, a capitalist country, there are so many Marxist professors in the learning centers. Capitalist societies advance and prosper, but communist societies become stagnant while everyone becomes equally poor, except the ruling elite. However, the elite is not safe because their status can change from one minute to the next at the whims of the ruler. Marxism is the opposite of the foundation of this country. Let me say that again. Marxism is the opposite of the foundation of this country, the greatest country in the world. It is an enemy of America and all the freedom we hold dear. I ask why are Marxists teaching the children of America? It is completely asinine. It explains why so many young people supported Bernie Sanders, a self-declared socialist. 
Socialism is the first step to communism. Do millennials know what would happen to them if the U.S. is fundamentally transformed into a communist society? I sincerely think they do not know. Due to the education they have been receiving from this Marxist professor, I can understand the interest in a self-professed progressive like Hillary Clinton. It is shocking how these so-called Marxists, so-called progressive, have been subverting your American way of thinking. What the gullible have been induced to support is something that will eventually erase all your freedoms. Marxists, inside the educational system and the liberal media, are doing a big number on all of you. They have misinformed and distracted most of you with Hollywood and sport personalities, pop music items, reality shows, talent contests, video games, and other trivialities, while in the background they are advancing the Marxist progressive agenda. The new generation of America, who eventually live under those so-called liberal, progressive, democratic, socialist system they think they want, will end up experiencing the same inescapable oppression that people who have lived under communism know very well. Many of you will not survive. According to Europe's Black Book of Communists and Washington DC's Communist Victim Memorial Foundation, communist regime all over the world had, by 1997, exterminated. Exterminated 100 million people and are still counting today. Liberal and progressive are just two positive sounding words hijacked by socialists and communists. So do not get confused by their benign sounding words. It is a ruse that sooner or later will end in the same place. The time when liberals believe in liberty is gone. Today's liberal, progressive or whatever disguise they want to use, are elitists who think they know what is best for you, the little people, and believe in mighty government dictating your life. The progressives do not believe in progress because they lead you to a system of the past called slavery. They will impose a mighty fascist, Marxist, totalitarian communist regime with them at the top, having everything that is denied to the little people, their slave, the deplorables. <laughs> They will take you to the same place, an oppressive society where despair and hopelessness prevail. Liberals, progressive, or so-called democratic socialists have sold out to a failed, obsolete, foreign ideology that is the opposite of the Declaration of Independence. I want to say to all of you, don't ever think again that it would happen in America because it is happening little by little under your no very noses. So wake up, open your eyes, learn from history, read the Declaration of Independence and go back to our foundation. We the people. The government works for you. You don't work to keep the ruling elite in luxury. The government is your servant. You pay their salaries. You can fire them. 
You should not be afraid of the government. They should fear you. You have the last chance in this election to fire them with the power you have in your own hand. Your vote. Get those social justice deceiving hackers off your back. You don't want anybody hacking into your iPhone. Why let these guys hack into your life? Send all of them to the trash can of history this November. Thank you very much. Wow, fantastic. Thank you, Augustine Blasquez. Uh, uh, so, these are first-hand first -hand experiences, and these gentlemen have, have the, uh, the knowledge and the insights of things that are real now, and it is happening in front of our noses. We're like the frog in the lukewarm water, and we need to wake up. I was reading in, in uh, this book, Exposing the Real Che Guevara, um, Humberto Fontova spoke with some defective Cuban spies that told him that basically that uh, uh, Cuban government uh, has, has been put a lot, a lot of these Hollywood celebrities and they go to Cuba, put them under 24 hour surveillance. And one senator said that the Cuban military owns the hotels, all the hotels in Cuba. And uh, if that's the case, well, the, the commander in chief could could actually do anything they wanted to to you in Cuba. Uh, I, I understand the, the libertarian concept of being able to travel there, but um, well, 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 what incentive do I have to go to Cuba, knowing that you know I'm, I'm going to stay and stay in a hotel that's owned by the Cuban military? <coughs> and uh, do you think if we had a military occupation in Cuba, we would find anything interesting there? Okay. Um, <clears throat> It has been going on for a long time that all the hotels in Cuba are bought. So the, um, you don't have any privacy inside your room. Whatever they you're doing there, you have been taped or listened. And sometimes they have used uh, what some important people have done inside the room as a way to blackmail them. And that's why you have so many, so, so many stars and Hollywood people and everything that if all of a sudden become um, very, very much supporter uh, of the Castro revolution or the Cuban system uh, because of that, because they have been blackmailed and that, they have done that to politicians and many important people. All the, um, I don't like people going to Cuba uh, because all the, everything is in the hands of the government. You are helping the Cuban government. You are not helping the Cuban people at all. There is no benefit to them. Uh, I will never uh, go to Cuba for as long as Cuba is a communist country because it's like going to a zoo where you see the people in jail and then not even with, you can talk freely with your own family. Everybody is scared, you know, they don't, they don't say anything. It's a very difficult situation and uh, this is completely forced and I was uh, a horrible uh, mistake that Obama did to open it to Cuba and actually he's violating the law because in 1996 uh, one uh, it was passed the health order and then uh, it stipulated that uh, we cannot make relation with Cuba or leave the US embargo unless Cuba um, have free election and freedom of speech and they release all the political prisoners. You know, you're helping them if you go to Cuba. So my advice, don't go to Cuba. <laughs> All right, thank you so much.